but I forgot that that's a thing. And now I could go and buy beans from Avoca, but I want to do like heart roaster beans. But you live and you learn, I guess. We're not in focus, are we? so cranked. That's why it was so bright. Okay, here comes the latter part of the stream. I'm going to um, bring the volume of my microphone a little bit down. That you don't have to hear the crunch, crunch, crunch. Now you might be wondering I hope it's a little better. I didn't, I wasn't able to read chat. Well, you might be wondering like why it's taking so long to grind. That would be because this is an espresso uh, coarseness grind, which means it takes forever to grind. Oh, 
Um, quite the workout. Not really. You heard nothing. It's gonna just in case. Okay. Got that and that. Here and this. It's way better now, I'm glad. See, the really annoying thing is I have it like 0.1% in the app. Um, so I can, I, I have no idea what is up with my volume levels. It's just all over the place. I can't tell. When I listened back to it, it sounded much quieter. I'm not sure. Um, right, right, right. We are doing a special step up. Okay. Been a while. Okay, this right here. That there. Let's focus. I just want to measure out that we have exactly 20 grams and I'm not missing any and of course I'm missing some because of why not There is a bunch bunched up in there, like a lot. I'm gonna use my brush and just knock it out. There we go. 19.8. There's still a bunch left in there. Twenty grams. Perfect. Okay. Now, let me read my instructions. By the way, if uh, you got any questions or you want to say anything, I can actually look over and read chat a little better than usual. No promises that I'll be able to always see it, but. Uh, Oh, jeez. One quick second. By the way, now I'll show it later. It's pretty nuts, though. Um, 50 grams. For 30 seconds, we stir. Yes. Make sure everything is prepared. Seems like it is. I'm gonna move this over. Okay. Um, I probably should have preheated this just so it doesn't absorb as much heat, but it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna rinse this out. Hold on. Okay, 50 grams for 30 seconds. Sorry, I just have to keep this in mind when I do this. All right, let's go. Fifty grams. 
news. 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds. Leave it to brew. 60 more seconds and I'm gonna cap it. Um, let me turn down this water to 204. Put a V60 brew. Let me get all the excess. No idea where I get got from. Okay, we're approaching. I'm gonna screw this on properly this time. There we go. And... That was a bit of a difficult press. It's all that pressure. It's quite um, a formidable task. But hey, this time I don't have grounds all over my coffee. Or, well yeah, all over my press. Like last time, so a win's a win. This is why I need a slider so I'm able to pull these great shots. <laughs> but that's that's coming out. I'm gonna get a slider. No worries. Alright. Very sweet, enjoyable, um, but while we drink that, we have to move on and um, I believe we want to go as fine as possible here, so just want to turn this until it stops clicking, do it right there. Um, and then we want to do, I don't have it written down, but I believe 18 clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18. Okay. <clears throat> now, because this is a coarser grind, it's going to take way less time to grind up. Hmm. It's a very interesting. See, the reason I like pulling it with that Prismo. Is because um, you get a very distinct profile. 
on the coffee. You can definitely taste where it's from. It's a little sour, I would say. Yeah, so maybe a little over extracted. Um, maybe less of a brew time next time. I'll see. Definitely not great, I would say. What am I doing? So this one is 22 grams. Um, so this is 0.2 grams, no not 0.2, 2 grams over what I just did, but I'm gonna end up with a lot more coffee. So it's way less concentrated, but hopefully, luckily, or not luckily, hopefully, fortunately, it'll end up um, tasting great. I don't know. We'll see. Still trying to dial in the V60, so I don't know. Let me focus in on the beans here. I see chat. Let me read chat. So basically when you're brewing the beans, what you're doing is you're extracting all the flavor and caffeine out of the beans. Um, and if you extract too much of that flavor, well, it ends up being a little too concentrated um, things like dark roasts, that's not as much of an issue. Um, but you also end up with a more bitter taste. It's more chocolatey, more earthy, but it's also more bitter. Um, and you don't get as much of the floral profile as you do with a light roast. So when you over extract the light roasts, then you end up with very sour and, um, uh, hold on, let me focus. Essentially, you want to make sure you extract just enough that it tastes good, but not too much that it tastes bad. I know that's very simplistic and dumbed down, but I mean, that's all it is. Um, all right, I'm gonna get to grinding. I'm gonna turn down the mic again because it's well, it's pretty loud. Depends how you like your coffee, I guess. Well, there. Okay. I definitely don't think brewing coffee on your own is the best way necessarily to get into it. Um, the best way, I think, is to go to a roastery or an artisanal coffee shop even if you don't roast your own beans, but I highly recommend one that does roast your own beans and try an espresso shot from them. Because the difference between that and anything you can get at Starbucks or Tim Hortons or wherever you go is night and day. Um, I always, a huge proponent of going to small coffee shops and supporting them, especially during these times and trying um, 
how good coffee tastes. It's not the best coffee how it tastes, but it is how really good coffee tastes. And if you try to brew your own coffee, like I am doing right now, it's gonna be worse than if you tried it there. And you would probably still think that coffee tastes kind of gross um, if you're coming from back camp. Which I used to be that way. I used to drink my coffee with a lot of creamer. I would still love coffee, but I would drink it with a lot of creamer. Um, and at the same time, I would also use Oh, you hear... Do you still hear the noise? I accidentally turned it up a little too much. Um, it should be good now. I mean, try looking up roastery near you. That's... I don't know entirely however places, how often you can find a coffee place like that, but um, I know that I've had some luck with that. Then again, I've only looked in this place where I live now and in um, the King County area, so kind of coffee bias there. If you don't have anything like that near where you live, then it's an interesting hobby to get into, but um, unless you're very interested, I wouldn't necessarily maybe get like a V60 like this. It's uh, I think forty dollars, something like that, um, and you can brew great coffee in it. And you got a kettle. You don't need anything super fancy. You get your own beans. You grind them. If you're not already a huge fan of coffee, though, I, I can't say that when you brew it on your own, it's going to turn out great and that you'll like it. It'll probably still be better than what you normally drink, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll enjoy it. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. You would be surprised. There's a lot of like sleeper people who love enjoying different types of coffee and they just, what they'll do is they'll buy from um, at an outside source. So like, I got my beans this time around from Heart Roastery. You can see that. They're from Oregon. They're nowhere near where I live. But, um, you'd be surprised. People that you wouldn't normally expect to drink coffee, drink coffee. Like special artisanal coffee. If you want to start up a coffee shop, I highly support you in doing that. Though, you know, during these times, maybe not so much. kind of a bad time to be a coffee business right now. Most of them are doing pretty great. Um, Okay, so let me run through what I just did. Um, I rinsed out the filter paper because typically there's a bunch of chemicals in the filter paper. They're usually bleached, so it's white, um, and a bunch of other things. It doesn't 
affect the coffee and like and making it taste chemically, but more papery. Um, so we usually wash it out with some water. And that's all it really is. Right, I was gonna show this. Um, I'll read your chat in just a moment, but look at this. I don't know what happened. It was literally fine a while ago, and then I left it in my sink for a bit. And now it's got big dents on the bottom. I don't know where they came from. Also, this is actually the wrong cup. I want this to go. All right, let me read chat. I didn't drop it. I don't know why it's bent or dented. No clue. There are different types of coffee. There's a light roast and then there's dark roast. That's usually your normal range. Um, but then there's other finer details. And realistically, those only matter when you're talking about um, light roasts. Because with dark roast, they all end up tasting somewhat the same. Um, because the longer you roast your coffee for, the less flavor there is. That's not to say that you shouldn't roast your beans. If you go with a green bean, which is not roasted at all, um, it ends up tasting extremely uh, full of flavor. It's a little overwhelming. I tried a uh, white espresso at a Seattle airport once. And a white espresso essentially is where beans are um, roasted right below the first crack, which is what a light roast would be. So it's not completely unroasted, but it's not, it's still a green bean. It's still considered a green bean. There we go. Um, very nutty flavor profile. Very interesting, but uh, yeah. Anyways, I was saying dark roasts, you lose that flavor the longer you roast it, so it all tastes kind of the same. Light roast, you get more of the floral varietals. Um, yeah, so, and then all those beans, they come from different places like Colombia, Ethiopia, um, Congo, just the different farms produce different results, and then you've got super um, over farmed beans that you'll end up in like McDonald's coffee. Oh, like McDonald's coffee now isn't that bad, but um, some places uh, like your typical office coffee, you know, that comes from beans that are um, produced in like mass quantities and they end up tasting kind of. Um, yeah, so that, that matters because, let me focus in on here, this for example is a light roast, right, and it comes from, uh, let me adjust this a little bit. Comes from a titi. And it's an heirloom. An heirloom is a bean, which is exactly what it sounds like, which is that it was passed down from their family. And, uh, they have a specific flavor profile to them. They can have notes of different, um, varietals. There's also the basically subgenus, you know, subspecies of each coffee bean. Um, for example, red bourbon, which is one of my favorites. Heirloom's not bad, but I like red bourbon. 
Yeah, so the ones I got are already roasted. I do have a roasting machine, but you know, I have not gone around to really trying to roast my own beans yet. Um, it is very, uh, like, you gotta leave that up to the pros, honestly. And I'm still perfecting, like, this craft itself. Once I get this down, I might try it, my hand at it, but, um, yeah, those are pre-roasted. But each, where it's roasted does not really matter. It's more where it comes from. So, beans from Ethiopia versus Colombia have a different taste to them. If it's roasted in Oregon or if it's roasted in Minnesota, it doesn't really matter. Depends on the skill of the roaster themselves. Um, but the actual origin of the roast, not really important. Where am I at? 22 grams, 50 grams of bloom. I'm going to stir it. Um, and then we're going to... Yeah. 20 seconds. I hope I'm in focus. I think I forgot. Also went a little over. This is gonna be awful. It's not gonna be awful, but it's not gonna be great. Let me check if I'm in focus. That was 20 seconds. Oh, I was in focus, okay. Now we add a slow pour of 360 more grams of water, which adds up to 410. I would like to reach it, but I'm a little too far away. So bear with me. I will say one nice thing about the V60 over the Chemex, even though my Chemex for now produces way better results, is I can get a single cup out of it. Whereas with my Chemex, I usually am pretty forced to go with a huge quantity, well not huge, but basically twice what I'm doing now. Um, a little over twice as much. There we go, almost 410 on the dot, 411, never mind. I'm gonna let that go. All right, fantastic. This is nearing the end of my stream. Um, so in terms of what I have planned, I'm planning on getting a set, so like a table, a wooden table to do all this stuff on and not just my uh, kitchen island. Um, hopefully also a hand tilt slider for my camera so I can get beautiful shots of it going up and over, getting an overhead shot, you know, lots of neat little things. Um, but that's all coming up, I'm still working on that. Yeah, it would be really cool. Um, but then again, it is kind of overkill considering, you know, this is just a stream for friends slash whoever just happens to come across it. I'm not really advertising this stream and I don't envision it getting much viewers. So why I'm investing so much into making the streams look good, I don't have a clue. But I'm really, I, I like doing it, so why not? Do what you love, not what gains you uh, success, I guess. I don't know. I don't have a trash bag. God damn it. I mean, 
yeah. Let me see how this turned out. Mmm. Not bad. Better than usual. I'm happy with that. Um, sorry for that noise back here. But that's my stream. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, tried to explain some things. I'm not great at explaining things. Hopefully, like, some of it made sense. My thought process. I'm not, by no means, an expert on this. Um. You guys have a good one. Uh, there's not much more to add here. This is literally me just making coffee for myself in the morning. Whoa. I have, yeah. Bye.